Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful kimono. If you're new here, welcome. This channel is all about making costumes and festival wear. I do make a wide range of things, so consider hitting subscribe to stay up to date with my projects. So as well as being pretty easy to make, this kimono is also a really simple, easy piece to wear, which is great for those days that you just want to chuck something on and look fab with minimal effort. I actually wear it with little black hot pants or shorts, some black high top trainers, maybe a necklace, and I'm ready to go. Now, I know that I said most of my projects require quite a low skill set. However, this one does require the use of a sewing machine. But don't let that pick you off because it only uses a simple straight stitch and zigzag stitch. Sewing machines are much easier than you think to use. If you are a novice and a beginner, let me know in the comment section below and I will do a little tutorial on how to use a sewing machine. So traditionally, kimonos are made with one roll of material that is usually about yay wide and there wouldn't be any patterns involved. They would just take certain measurements and then cut the fabric in certain pieces and a bit like origami they would fold it in certain ways and cut it and then use all those pieces to make you a kimono usually with little or no wastage so inspired by this I'm going to show you my method of making this kimono one of the things that makes it easy is the fact that it doesn't use a pattern you just take a few measurements and then you cut the fabric in certain lengths and then we make it like that I'm going to use centimeters for this project but as you're taking your own measurements you can of course use inches the other thing to note is that this kimono is incredibly flowy, so it's very forgiving, which means uh, it's not going to show up any of your little mistakes very easily at all. The only thing that might be a little bit tricky is the fact that you're dealing with so much material, it might get a little bit confusing which piece is which, or which piece is inside and out. But I do have some tips for that, so watch out for those. Again, because there's so much fabric, this was actually a little bit tricky for me to film. So I've created this little half-size kimono, I basically just halved all the measurements and ended up with this tiny little kimono. So cute! It's also a single-sided print so you can tell easily on the video which side is inside and outside as I'm sewing the bits together. Also, I'm going to divide this video up into chapters and I'm going to add the contents and time marks in the comments section below so that you can refer back to it and follow it step by step. Okay, that's enough talking from me, let's get started. For the main body of the kimono, I've got a printed satin material that is quite light, so it'll flow really nicely when it's worn. You'll need roughly 3 meters, but we'll work out exactly how much you need in a minute in step 1. I've also got some satin to edge the kimono. I've chosen black to go with the main fabric, but you could choose any color that you like. Look for a light to medium weight satin, but nothing too thick. You'll need 60 centimeters or 24 inches of this, provided that the width of the material is about 1.5 meters long. If it's shorter than this, you'll need to get more material. And then for the tools, you'll need fabric scissors, a tape measure, pins, a sewing machine, thread to match your fabric, and later on you'll need an iron and ironing board. We'll be able to make this kimono based on just two measurements. First, measure from your shoulders to the floor. This will end up being the finished length of your kimono. In my case, this is 1.5 meters. Next, measure from your wrist over your shoulder, across the back of your neck, and down to your wrist again. You might need to do this in two measurements and add them together. Now take this measurement and divide it by three. This will become your panel width. For me, this is 55 centimeters. Now, how much fabric you'll need depends on which direction the pattern on your material goes. Most patterns are in this orientation, but you might sometimes come across fabric with pattern that runs in this direction. If your pattern is this way, up or if your pattern doesn't have a direction you'll need to get twice the length of your kimono the length of my kimono is 1.5 meters so i need to get three meters of fabric if the pattern on your fabric is the other way up like this you'll first need to check that the width of the fabric is long enough to be the length of your kimono as it might be a little short if you're happy with this then you'll need four times your panel width for me this would be 2.2 meters now that we have our fabric, we can cut the pieces into shape. If your pattern ran this way up on the fabric, first you want to cut the width of the fabric down to twice your panel width. My panel width was 55 centimeters, so I need to cut my fabric down to 110 centimeters. Then cut your fabric into quarters like this. Fold your fabric in half and then cut along the fold carefully, or depending on your fabric, you might be able to snip it and tear it, but test this out on a small bit of fabric first. Remember that I'm making a miniature kimono alongside my main kimono so you can see what I'm doing a bit easier. If the pattern on your material ran this way, then cut your fabric into quarters like this. You'll end up with four pieces of fabric that match the measurements you took in step one. Take one of these panels and cut it in half this way. These will become your sleeves. The other panels become your front left, your front right, and the back panel. At this point you might find it helpful to pin a piece of paper to the front of each panel to mark which piece is which. If you're working with fabric that has the print on both sides, it also helps identify which side of the fabric is inside and which is the outside. Next, measure across the back of your neck, from here to here. For me this is 20 centimeters. I find it useful to draw this next bit out, so you might want to do the same. On your back panel, mark out your neck width in the middle, then above it mark the panel width. 
We need to work out what the measurement either side of the neck width is. So take the difference between these two numbers and divide it by two. I end up with 17.5 centimeters. Now take the left front panel and mark this measurement in from the top right hand corner. Next, measure 40 centimeters or 16 inches down from the top left corner. Use a long ruler to draw a line between the two points and then cut along the edge. Now we want to round off this corner. Either curve it off by eye with your scissors or use a plate to draw a line to follow. Place this piece back to back on the other front panel and use it as a guide to cut off the same piece in reverse. Make sure you put these pieces back to back so that we end up with a left and right panel. Now take the satin that we're going to edge the kimono with and cut it into four long strips. Measure 14 centimeters along and then cut or tear it along the length. Before we get sewing, I'll show you my method of stitching. First I place two pieces of fabric together, making sure that the good sides are together, and I run a straight stitch along the edge, making sure to go forwards, backwards and forwards again at the beginning and at the end of my stitch. I stitch my line just under 1cm in from the edge, using the edge of the foot of the sewing machine as a guide. Then after I finish my straight stitch, I go over the edge with a zigzag stitch, making sure that the right side of the stitch goes just over the edge of the material, and this ensures that the fabric doesn't fray. So using that method, we're going to attach the front, left and right panels to the back panel. They only attach across this small section here. First lay down the back panel facing up, making sure you have it the correct way up. Then lay out one of the front panels face down on the top, lining it up with the corner. Pin them together across the line that you'll sew. Now take this carefully to your sewing machine and sew them together with the method I just showed you. First a straight stitch and then a zigzag. Once you've done that, do the same with the second front panel. Now take the material back to your table and lay it out like this, with the good side of the fabric facing up and the front and left right panels facing towards you. Now we're going to attach the sleeves. Place your first sleeve here, with the good side facing up and making sure you don't have the pattern upside down. Then turn it over and lay it on top of the main body of the kimono like this. Find the center of this edge by folding it in half and then line up that point with the stitch that we just stitched. Now pin these pieces together across this side, starting at the middle point and working out towards the edge. Then take it across the sewing machine and stitch these pieces together. Now do the same on the other side. Take one of the strips of satin that we cut earlier and cut it in half this way. Then fold them in half lengthways with the good side facing in and pin them along the long edge. If you're feeling confident, you can get away with not pinning this. Now go to your sewing machine and run a straight stitch along this edge. No need for a zigzag stitch here. Now turn this tube inside out and then do the same for the second strip. Now heat up your iron on the appropriate setting and then iron this strip flat so that we get a nice sharp fold. Lay your kimono out flat on the table with the sleeve section in front of you. Line up the sewn edge of this strip with the edge of the sleeve. It'll be a bit longer than the sleeve, but that's fine, we'll trim it off afterwards. Take it to the sewing machine and sew it together with a straight stitch and then a zigzag stitch. Then trim the strip so it finishes in line with the sleeve. Now do the same on the other side. After you finish both sides, get your iron out and iron the seam flat. This will ensure that the edge of the sleeve sits nicely when it's worn. Lay out your kimono flat like this, with the back panel facing towards you and the front panels facing away from you. Now fold your kimono in half like this. Pin it together along the underside of the sleeve and all the way down the side of the kimono to the bottom. Again, if you're feeling confident, you can skip the pinning, but it's good to check that all the edges line up before you start sewing. Found that if you start sewing right at the edge of the material, you can get caught up in the machine and make a bit of a mess of the edge. So start at this point and sew outwards towards the edge. Then, when you've sewn this short section, start at the same point we just started and sew the sleeve shut. Go slowly over the join as there is a lot of fabric layers here for the needle to go through and you might need to assist your machine by manually turning it through. When you get to the corner, leave the needle down, lift the foot up, then pivot your material, put the foot back down and sew down the side of the body of the kimono. Now do the same on the other side. take the three long strips that we have left over. We want to make one long strip out of them, so line them up along the short edge, good sides facing each other, and stitch them together. 
Now we want to make one long tube the same way that we did before. Fold it over lengthways, good sides facing in, then stitch them along the long length. Now we need to turn it inside out. It's a long strip so this might take you a few minutes. And then iron this strip flat so that we get a nice sharp fold. Now we can attach it to the main body of the kimono the same way we did the sleeves. Find the middle of the tube and line it up with the top centre of the back panel. Start pinning the pieces together from here and work down either side of the front panels. Take care to position the pieces properly where we curved off the corners on the front panels. Now stitch them together, taking care to go slowly over the joins in the tube as they will be thick with lots of layers of fabric. Also take care when sewing around the curved bits as I just mentioned as the two pieces of fabric won't naturally want to line up with each other. Don't forget to go over this edge with a zigzag stitch afterwards. Now we're almost there. I'm sure you've already tried the kimono on, but if you haven't already, take this opportunity to wear the kimono and check the length. If you want to make it a bit shorter, you can cut a strip off the bottom, making sure you cut a straight strip off, don't cut it at an angle. Now all we need to do is finish off the bottom edge. Fold up the edge twice and pin it in place. You won't be able to get away without pinning it this time unfortunately. You might find that the fabric wants to unfold and doesn't want to stay pinned in place, so I find it helpful to iron the fabric down before I sew it. Now stitch this edge together with a single straight stitch, no need for a zigzag stitch. After that go over all your stitches and cut off any loose threads. And now you're done! So that's all from me from this video, if you've enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below or find me on social media or if you end up making any of my projects please tag me in them, I would love to see what you get up to as well. To check out another one of my videos, click here or to subscribe to my channel and stay up to date with my projects, click here. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, bye!